Uh, hey, thank you, Theodora, again. It's nice to see your name popping up on a regular basis, um, uh, supporting the uh, efforts here. And also, Jesse, tonight, uh, with a nice, substantial uh, contribution. Thank you. He says, thanks again for your wonderful talks. They fortify my mental position and focus when painting. I'm a new painter. Instead of painting imaginatively, I'm setting up simple still life and really trying to capture truth. I love to hear that. Love to hear that, as you all well know. <laughs> um, uh, my my focus today, as you've seen, is on the. Uh, we're back to points, you know. And I, t you know, we, we talk about painting by the spot, painting by, and then we talk about Sargent's points and angles, and then we're talking about painting by the mass, right? And the importance of mass and 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 the value of masses and all that sort of stuff. And what I'm going to walk with you through today is just a little bit of how we work it out because. Aiden's coming up with a very specific question. And I think, by the way, anybody wants to uh, pursue this will find probably four, if not five, videos on the same subject. But as I've said, what I'm trying to do now is narrow in more and more, uh, focus in closer. So whenever there's a specific part of a point I've made, you know, the point of a point within a point, I feel like uh, I should go for it. And uh, so hopefully, uh, you people who get it are just refreshed, and those people who haven't heard this before are going to get it better because it's a new way of talking about it. So uh, here's Aiden. He said, I noticed that you start with small floating notes. Okay, and that's everybody, everyone's seen that. I'm going to be showing you that. And from what I can grasp so far, that you find relationships of value, color, and chroma of these notes on the canvas. And I yeah, so the relationships, internal relationships of these. Yeah, so he's got that right in the money. Do you keep adding more notes until you get your major players and high contrast areas for drawing silhouettes and then expand those notes into each other? So that's an interesting question, right? Do you see that idea of spot, 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 and gradually more and more, and then gradually they come up and butt into each other? Well, that was the training actually that I got with Brackman. Um, and you have every reason to believe that that's fundamentally the Monet point uh, but when you get to Boston School of Thinking, in my own way of working, uh, it's not exactly what I do. And I'm going to show you that tonight. I'm going to show you how I set out points and then blow in the masses behind the points. And that might be something people are missing. I say points, for example. I'm talking about light effects, the visual order, the high contrast players. Sometimes not so high contrast, but important ones because they form a top and bottom or a good exit. But... Um, so if you, if you can follow that idea, um, uh, you'll see that I'm saying, no, we don't do it by just gradually encroaching, but you can. Um, I didn't like that approach, actually, with Brackman. I found it um, uh, too, maybe, maybe the word would be too much of a, um, too much putting off, not getting to the point quickly enough, and uh, thereby, there, therefore not being able to see clearly enough, early enough, what you have. And I'm talking about in terms of effects when things meet. But um, but I suggest everyone chase down both different approaches, okay? But I'm still going to show you what we do, That's because that's what you're asking. So he says, I want to know how you go from a small note to making it travel across the canvas into other spots. I'm eager to see how you start the painting and take it to a finish and looking forward to more videos. Now, I was showing you a little bit of video work, part of a, a demonstration I did here tonight. Thanks to uh, very much to Sean, who videotaped it and then took the time, and it did take some time to provide it for me. Sean, I wish I could be using all 10 of those things you sent me, but that was really appreciated, um, and I am using one. But now, so notice what you say. I, I, know, I want to know how you go from a small note to making it travel across the canvas into other spots. So um, think of it maybe differently. That's one of those questions, one of those points where you say, is that really the right question? Do I really do that? I put down a note and then travel it across the canvas until it hits another spot. In a sense, I do, but you'll find that it's just slightly different. It sounds like from what you're thinking. So let's just look at these first clips that I've uh, shown you before. I did this video of the figure. I mean this, and I really, I looked for it today, so maybe I've never done a video showing these, but I'm quite sure I have. I just couldn't find it, and I forgot to ask my producer. He would have known where it was. Um, but I want to make a point with you all right here. Do you see how it says, anyone drawing, this is a quote from Degas, anyone drawing a line with that much authority uh, must have known where he was starting and where he was going to end. 
Now, that's talking line, right? So you're talking about this beautiful, exquisite, long line, even the one that Sargent talks about. And you have to know where you're starting it and where it's going to end. There's an angle involved in it, right? So to articulate it with authority, you really have to have certainty about that starting and end point. Well, I take the same approach when it comes to to uh, color and effects and, and, and the visual order of effects I've been talking about now, organizing the organizing process for the surface. Uh, and so... Let's talk about this one just simply. I'll bring. I'll come. I'll come back to this uh, again, maybe more than once. But you can see on the very left video. I mean, the very left <laughs> image. Um, and let's see if I can get a laser beam go, going on here. Um, all right, laser. Where are you? All right. I have a lazy laser. So here we have. Uh, you see the main color here. It's a color movement. You see, it's more purpley here, more golden here. The human figure. And a kind of a redder version up here that's not quite as purpley as the legs. And the background has is this a dark and that's a less dark area. There's spot, spot, spot. This was a little more spotty earlier, and I don't I didn't have the time to find you with the version where I have about five notes. But so there's this green mass you see is going to be evolving over here. And look at the far right one, you'll see what I'm dealing with. And uh, and you see me spotting around other significant colors, right? And that begins to be the process. Now, what you see me beginning to do here though as opposed to just running them into each other, is I, I actually bring these together for the point of establishing, for the purpose of establishing the top. And I go to the, do the same thing with the purpose of establishing the bottom or an exit. Um, and I believe I may have been trying to establish this point or some combination of this point on the angle here and this point as the low point. So here would be the top, there would be the bottom. And so you see me here, I'm quickly articulating now, I'm articulating this also because it's very powerful, and, 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 and just coincidentally, so is this one. So they're also, they also have their reasons to be. Now, I wouldn't have been in the middle of this probably as soon as I was down here because I'm establishing top and bottom. Everything is a subdivision of that. So you're establishing the major distances on your page. And so instead of growing it toward that, you wanna, I want to see it early enough, and I want to see how the model, I want to see the model sort of shaping up into what she's going to be, and I want to see how she's filling the page. So that all I really have to do to get that is have this major mass there, and then and then fill out and you know, fill out the point. I mean, mass to the point. So uh, that's really the largest, um, you know, the most simple interpretation I can give you. And then the massing follows that, right? Now it's true that this is like a big mass. This is a big mass and all that. But I'm not massing it generally up to here and then working this line. I'm actually going and finding the point first, and then pushing the unity of the mass from that. Here's the shoulder point, and I push this into unity from that and pull the unity this way from that, right? You see it just feathers off in lots of places here. I'm not working on it. Uh, but uh, even when I, you see a spot like this where it looks like I'm sort of bringing them together, what I'm going to do first is establish the effect and its location. Remember, that's the same point as anyone drawing with a line with that much authority, right? So I'm establishing the, this point up here, and you see I've done even better work trying to get that to be a very specific point. And I'm really getting trying to get the angle right to this or end to this, which is a very good point now. Uh, but if I'm going to do this outside thing, I'm trying to establish the location of this thing by angle to this and by distance to this or whatever else reads. And then, and then uh, massing away. All right. You follow that? All right. Um, and I think that's the best I can do. I'm just simply telling you I don't mass them up to each other. I go and hunt for points and then mass. Okay, and that was what your real question was, I think. So you can just look at these and see how I close in gradually. Now, I'm going to show you a video here um, of me doing this, okay, so you can really understand it. And uh, I've never done this before, so Mr. Producer has done an amazing thing. And again, as I said, thanks to Sean, who <laughs> took the video in the classroom. Uh, it was a demonstration. So here you see that me establishing with my brush the uh, top. And uh, so, and by the way, Jazz, this was the, uh, this is a basket, a bushel basket. This is a hat, straw hat. This is the top of, the, of a bushel basket. It doesn't look like it matches the other one. This is a piece, an edge of some straw or something, grass or something or other. And then some roses and leaves, of artificial roses popped in the middle here with a vase down here, just so you know. There's a big old umbrella back here, brilliantly red, orangey umbrella that's going to eventually play its roles. But so you know where we're going. But here I am establishing the top, and I'm after. So I'm after this purely as a top. So I'm doing enough of this, the really reading part. But I am getting over the top, even though it doesn't read particularly well, as you can see, as you get to the right side of that. But I am establishing the top, and you can see this. Otherwise, before that, this is all just spots, right? 
The next thing I'm going to be doing is establishing this point over here, the low point. And uh, that's the exit over here. And so now you're seeing me working on that. Uh, and remember, each one of these things, your first job is to bring the... Uh, to bring the values together and try to produce the effect. And the second thing is to try to restate it in exactly the right location, which means you'll tend to make the light a little too low and draw it a couple times and slowly bring it up to where you want it to and get a crisp, nice light effect. It does look like at some point, by the way, this is the end of the start, so it does look like at some point, uh, you won't see it here, but it looks like I did at some point actually increase the middle tone, darken the middle tones a little bit more and decreased the, the, the uh, punch, brought the punch of this edge over here. It's more forceful here and weaker over here as it exits. But this is a classic exit. And this is when you're trying to locate your composition. You should be able to find that distance there. You should be able to get this location here from here to here to here. You should be able to easily locate that visually. And I mean to say, put it down there and then see if it isn't right. I'm talking about how it works when you look through your viewfinder. So now you see me over on the left side. I've done that. I've done that exit, or some of it. I think I've done all of it. And uh, I think we may have cut some of this just a little bit, but I think it's, I was asking for that, so that's fine. So here's the exit. And now we're over here articulating this corner, and you'll have a very clear idea that what I'm after is this to this to this, right? And the gap and the filling happens afterwards. <clears throat> so I'm only saying that to make this really clear what happens in the very, very start, that I'm not massing these masses up to these points. I'm finding the points. This is a composition problem at this point, and I'm not waiting around for it to, to maybe be right. I want to know in the start. That slow approach, you know, that Monet takes, it might take you long enough that you won't be able to determine you actually have the composition you want. This one, you as soon as you have these, these this point, this point, and this point, you'll be able to see whether the proportions are right, you know, the width, the height, and the gestural aspects, the angles of it are right. And uh, to itself, internally, and, and then you'll adjust it to, in a way that is good for the composition, but is true to the proportions of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the actual mass of stuff itself. At one point, I had this thing, I think, fairly far out here, this edge of this basket and I brought it out, I gradually moved that over. But what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm starting to establish this, this point along here. That's what I'm after. So you can see I'm looking for, this is technically, this is the base between this one and this one. We have what I call the low, and this is the top, so the top and bottom. So then what matters is that these things are located, like the left edge of this is located so that it's the right distance from here, and it gives you the right width, whatever you have to work with by width, to this height, right? And each time you bring a new effect in, you test the effect and location first before you start massing. Okay, that's what I do. Um, I, and by the way, there are places like down in this corner here where there's no other color there. You just you can just go ahead and use that. Keep using that mass up. What you see me doing there, by the way, in this area is I use the color. I'm trying to get to the exact note that's going to be there, cutting this one. So uh, I'm not so much concerned about the whole thing that's happening in here. Although if there's a movement in their value or whatever, I want it. But I am concerned about what that last note is. I want to have that note exactly right where it crops this. And that's always the routine, right? So when that's, that's the Benson conversation about two flat notes. What is the exact value of this note exactly the moment it strikes the black and then what, or the dark, whatever it is? And then what is the exact note of that at that exact same moment? So those two values meeting side by side are the exact ones. And I do mean the exact ones in a relational way because they're frequently frequently impossible to actually make the exact ones. But for the world that we're in here, there will be this mass here. What happens when it does whatever it does to this one is what's producing the effect at the point. So uh, I'm almost there. I'm going to come around the corner down here trying to locate the lowest point of this. And I think I'll be out of there if I didn't already do that. Let's see if I did. Thanks to my producer for trimming this video down. It was, uh, you know, when I do these videos, it embarrasses me sometimes how much I'm talking, how many, how, f how few the marks are. And then I wonder why I'm not covering the canvas in two hours like I claim I do. <laughs> but it is that conversation that I, it, for me, I find that I'd rather have you hear everything I'm saying than just do it. On the other hand, uh, there are times that I need to get some more videos together where I just simply am uh, doing the work 
And uh, when we get these videos doing that, uh, you'll be able to see me without conversation, well, or with overlaid conversation. I do, ho I do mean to get to that, and I don't want to tease you, uh, have you thinking I might be getting to it and not really be getting there. But one thing I, I would say, and so what I'm doing here, it's not that I'm taking so long to figure it out as much as on this conversation. I'm telling people why I'm adjusting it and what exactly I'm looking to do just at that point. So, and you see the conversation goes on. But you can see early on I was further away from this. Now that could be because I was planning to move it over, but I wanted it, uh, but I wanted to establish this color first and that light mass have that wet so when I brought it over, I would be able to cut it the right place. But I think, in fact, I was actually deciding, I decided later to pull the whole thing over, which, because it was related to this, and I decided that the, the proportions weren't quite right, and I preferred the placement on the page when this came over further. So those are the things that go through your mind. But I think you're following me. That's just, those are the three points. And just take your sweet time. So what, when I say, again, I'm going to refer you to that quote. When, I, when, when Degas says, you, anyone who could, and let's just go back and look at the, uh, at the previous slide. So anyone drawing a line like that with my, my, that much authority. So I'm talking about establishing visual, visual units so that there's visual, their angles are visually right, those sorts of things, you see what I mean? But I'm also establishing effect so that the effect of the light and the color contrast here is right in relation to the effect and color contrast here. Effect is typically what I mean by that is contrast plus edge, uh, that it produces a light effect. And I want the relationship of these two light effects to be, to be good. Uh, remember the first time through these things, you make it as like as you can and it still won't be like. So you'll still have to make it more like and following the Bonat model. I, by the way, I was talking to Tom Dunley this past week and uh, we were, he was mentioning how, how he heard Gamel say that same thing to him. I quoted as a Paxton or having Paxton say, say it his way. He had also heard the Bonacquo, but I think I'm going to interview Tom again one of these days with the idea of just getting into more of what uh, the sorts of things we were experiencing, uh, the, 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 the verbiage, the, the concepts that were, being, uh, that were being put forth for us. So now let me just show you some other things. Um, oops. I didn't mean to do that. All right. So, so here you see... Uh, uh, something that's a, apparently, at least on the surface, a little more like the Monet model. But you'd be hard-pressed to find these sorts of edges in the Monet model uh, very early on. You can see this is very early on. You can see these marks are broken. You can see the surface of the canvas there. Right through the whole thing, you can see the surface of the canvas. So, uh, and, uh, so, so you can see that he's working on the same premise, you know, that he's establishing some points. And he will be establishing points. He'll be finding things that read... Um, Things that are of use uh, at the at the moment it appear, it's largely about spots like this was a color spot that would have an angle relationship to this um, even this would serve as a spot for a while so you can see that he's creeping up on the drawing more so by a bit than i think he would say de camp does in his but uh, still i like to show this one because it's got a little bit of that idea of both and uh, so the, and you'll see this in Sargent as well. So this amount of drawing of square edges and real effects and making them comparatively right, and then doing other ones, uh, and and searching out the set of those things that begins to establish the the um, proportions of the major uh, uh, areas of this painting. Uh, but yeah, these guys will break. We'll work with broken color, broken color, and then uh, and Tarbell in particular, uh, and then he will jump to an edge. Um, but it doesn't mean he's creeped up on it necessarily. Uh, and we can't, it's impossible for me to tell you that he, that he did all this stuff and then crept over and then these two just met. My guess is he thought like Degas, he, he, he found a point that read well, he placed it on there as an effect and he worked that way. But it's always useful to try things both, you know, do the, do the flip it when you think you've heard, you understand something, try it the other way. Now this is another start I did for the intensive this year in the classroom, and I took on a very complex thing <laughs> and uh, a larger area than I would recommend a student do. Um, but you can see what I'm after again. The, the mass in the middle is clearly uncovered, right? Because I had so many things to set up. This left side here plus what we had to provide a top with. Uh, the exit of this of this thing down through the bottom looks like I cut that funny. I mean, it wasn't cropped. 
and this exit here, uh, this exit here, you see all these things. So I'm on the outside, so this is hugely important in the locations of things, like the locations of certain of these points. These all become the points, the points and angles. But you can see I've made a very strong attempt, well you haven't, can't see it because you can't see the original, but I've made every attempt to make the colors as magnificent as they are in direct paint, and then I go to the point. And then I, when there's nothing else going on, I might, I might just, you know, just for the sake of, I can, at some point you can just begin to get rid of things. So if this is a formy idea, you'll blow a formy idea and basically not have any other conversation except color changes right through there. But that is always, for me, it's typically following, not always. And again, remember to, to don't lock yourself out with the rules of thumb. They don't, the rules of thumb are just generally true. But mostly what I'm hunting for is to get this in the right place so that I can with certainty just blow that away. Uh, so I, I tend to always be looking for that lead, you know, ta-ta-ta-ta, and then the rest of the music just fills in. Um, so, yeah, so you see the bottom here established, you see the top here established, and you see this will be my major locator, this thing right through here for my widths. That's going to be the grand locator. So between the three of these, these have to be very right to each other. But this one is good because it's just so easy to see in relation to the big into the big, relation to the big proportions of the width of the frame. So, yeah, but I'm hoping this shows you that I'm not just filling up and then gradually getting to the points. I'm getting to the points and, and then backing, backing the masses away. But don't limit yourself. It's a both-end thing. Whatever the efficiency, whatever is the most efficient way to get your general impression on the paper is what really matters. On the canvas, I should say. Um, yeah. And I'm showing you this, uh, this is Zorn, because you can see the weight he's put on certain points. And I would suggest to you, it's very evident that he used these points in the same way I'm talking about using them. Power exit over here, uh, even the foot touching on the edge over here, it's not a power strong point. But you can see there's a, there's a tendency to get around this thing. This isn't accidental stuff, this, these the exits are setups, setup points. And any other exits we might find important, it might be this one early. But um, but you, you can see the same thing that this angle this sets up to the say the nose, and this is one of those decisive angles you want to really have that great, and you're going to have a triangle between these here that has to have the right tilt and the right proportions, and um, so you can set up those points without massing. Uh, I have no idea how much underlying drawing this guy did, but you in our world you have to get to the place where it's just visual. You've lost all this stuff you're trying to hang on to as line and just letting it now show forth. It's at, by light, by, by, by the quality of the effects. And let, just let itself sing. And even when you're trying to make a picture that's more, fine, more fine and less, you know, what would you call that? More, less painterly, shall we say? Less, 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 less uh, flowing and blowing. Uh, this one here is, and you all seen it, and I would recommend you, if you really want to follow this again, look up the GBA time-lapse video online. Um, and um, that's what it's called. You can just find it on YouTube. And, um, but this is, was done exactly the same way, where it was very significant. This point was very significant. This point here was very significant. The top, whatever I used, either this end or that, something about this made up a top. It's very significant stuff. And all these things were done. Bef not, they weren't put in after. They were, you can see that they were massed. So there's some massing that comes up toward it, but you make your points, you do your work with your points because you have this liberty to do it without this heavy burden of paint all over the place. And you can get these angles right to each other these, because the effects are showing. And uh, so you can see that's what I'm doing. So I was very important early on to get myself from a point, something right here, to a point way out here so I could establish and so get this big width and this big height thing going on and be able to see that that actually felt true in uh, its relationships by both gesture as an object and uh, and then once you see that you can see it's very easy to begin to mass it but you'll see how i do it it's a combination i do it as line and mass and i don't ex i don't force one on top of the other i do them as they seem agreeable to the uh, to to helping with getting me closer to the general impression without uh, without costing me uh, without without uh, without injury shall we say so there you are, Aiden. That's pretty much the story. Uh, let's just b phase back through them again. I wonder if I've forgotten anything. Um, I think that's it. One of the things you're going to get to once you get the massing going is you're going to see the great spots and their play to each other, right? 
So remember, when I talk about spots at the beginning, you would have, he would have set up spots, presumably, or I certainly would. <laughs> I shouldn't say that about Zorn. I haven't followed that with him. But you'd set up these spots, um, the, the major mass of light, the minor one here and the other one over here, as color spots and begun to locate them if you work the way I do, uh, as you can see me doing here. So, yeah. By the way, mine looks very flat, but it is relatively flat. There isn't a lot of form in this, a lot of relatively flat things. This will eventually have some form to it, and sometimes I will go for that. But this has significantly obvious form here, and you can see me indicating it, not chasing it in little ways, not finessing it, but broadly expressed form. And that'll be part of the general massing as well. Uh, so you won't just go mindlessly plowing through there with color X. You know, when the thing, when the, when the color and value change in nature, you'll change the color and value, even if you're just trying to close this out and, and so you don't have a big discussion over here. You will probably at some point, even as you're doing this, have to find the shadow line. And even if it's a very weak one, you'll want to know where it is. Just saying that so you've thought about it. Uh, because beyond that, 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 that area we know is relatively flat. So let's see what else I can talk about. I think I've covered it. All right, good. Aiden, uh, let me know if that's not enough, and uh, I hope I didn't overextend this thing 27 minutes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge here of staying in the half-hour zone. How about that? I think, I, th I keep saying in two weeks, but I'm thinking about 10 days, I'm thinking this, the weekend after this one, that you, when you get this, I think we're going to be trying to do the live event. So I haven't, this is the first my producer is actually finally hearing this, so I'm hoping we can work together and make that happen. Um, so, all right, good. Um, and happy painting. I'm very pleased to see that you're working on this and trying to make this your own, uh, Aiden. And I wish you well with that. Uh, and all of you have a great week um, and uh, see you in the next one.